welcome to the 10 O podcast by Train Like a Gymnast. Today we have Christine Peng Peng Lee. Hello. And speaking of 10 O, do you know how many 10s you've gotten in your career? I have gotten 10 tens. What? Isn't that crazy? It's kind of amazing. So this is like, it's like it's a number tens. it's a numbers game. It's so that is weird. Awesome. Yeah. So what made you um, go for a six NCAA season? Yeah, so Originally, I wasn't going to take the sixth year, and I remember um, after my second ACL injury, I always knew I was going to stay five years, but then I didn't know I could stay six years, and at that point, I was like, I'm over it, I'm done, like, (laughs) five years is fine, Miss Val, actually, the whole coaching staff asked me if I wanted to come back as sixth year, and I said, no, like, it was a flat no, I was like, you don't want me on your team, you won't want me, like, anywhere near the gym, because I'm going to be so, like... (laughs) over it right and so it was funny because during my fifth year um the coaches were saying oh about that sixth year and they yeah. were kind of like just joking right um they, they were just like playing along and so yeah. I was thinking in my head because the fifth year was so great I had such a great time the teammates my teammates were amazing and yeah. uh that's one of the reasons why I was like considering coming back a sixth year but then Ooh. I was like oh they gave my scholarship away because when we had that meeting originally Miss mm-hmm. Val was asking if I wanted the sixth year or not, and I was saying no because, you know, I was just over it. They were yeah. like, well, we'll give your scholarship away. So then that's when I was like, oh, like, I guess it's not really a thing, but kind of like a what if situation. Right, right. And kind of like, what if I did have my full four years at UCLA? And so that's when I went up to the coaches and jokingly said back, I was like, so if I only had to train two hours a day <laughs> and not do preseason, then for sure I'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> So then we actually wow. um, we actually had a meeting, okay. and Miss Val and them said, you know, paying like we actually kept your scholarship just in case you wanted to come back a sixth year, and so that's when I was like, I went through two weeks of like the most stressful decision of my life because I think that when I was telling my friends and I was telling people around in my life, some of them were like, well, you're getting old now, you know, you took your off after high school, like you need to adult, like you can't just stay in school forever, like they were <laughs> really. It wasn't yeah. a positive, you know, question when I was like, well, so what do you think if I came back in sixth year? It was more like, why? Yeah. <laughs> so the, it was a very interesting decision, and I, could, I mean, I couldn't have made a better decision, and I think I had to shut everyone out, and it was more, my decision was more um, based on a lot of things. It was, I really liked the team. My gymnastics yeah. was doing really well because I was only doing two events, and the... Were you doing bar? Bars and beans. Bars and beans yeah. So the main question, the main questions I answered was, um, I was able to like also renew my visa and yeah. stay in the country and kind of like be here and start looking for jobs. And the other thing was was that um, I was able to use all four years of my eligibility. That was like the main thing because I was always like, what if I never use that? one year of eligibility and yeah. then I'm kind of in the adult world you can never go back right right so it was always like oh I might as well use it while I can because I'm yeah. never going to have this opportunity again so that was like the bigger so it was your waiting point first so what what were those two years uh were they back to back when you first started that, yeah okay my first so my, I tore my ACL um coming into my freshman year so I okay. tore it before UCLA yeah. and then um my it retore by itself it disintegrated in my knee, guys. Like, it, it just, like, it just decided to die on me. And then yeah. the second year um, was, I just got it redone. Right. Okay. So I had to sit out two years. So, I mean, two years away from any sport is a very long time. So yeah. how, how did you not give up? How did you learn from your injuries? How did you rehab through them? Like, what was going through your mind mentally of, like, okay, this is a challenge. Right. This isn't the end. A lot was going through my mind. <laughs> Did I tell you that? A lot was going through my mind. Um, I think my freshman year was easier because I was like, okay, I just have one year of rehab. I'm going to do all the steps that I need to and then come back and train. Right. So I was like actually training again. But then um, when I toured the second time, that's when my mentality was actually a lot harder yeah. because the first time it's easier, easier after a surgery, <laughs> quotations. <laughs> but it, because um, then you know to like, okay, you're going to go through this rehab, and then this rehab, and then you're going to start jumping, and then you're right. going to start um, doing basic skills. But then the second time around, you know exactly what you have to go through, sure. and it is a full year of rehab. It's not like you're cleared in eight months, they're going to rush it. It's yeah. like they take their time for yeah. rehab, and it is so long and boring and monotonous. And so I think 
the one really great thing I learned from uh, being injured is learning how to be a really great teammate mm-hmm. and so that was kind of like something I took advantage of and I think yeah. that's why I was able to help lead the team uh, my sixth year because I was right. understanding of how different people work and trying to also find my voice on the team because mm-hmm. I think it's really hard to find your voice when you're injured yeah. especially as a freshman yeah like when you're a freshman and injured you're, you're kind of like, like lost at that <laughs> point you're like okay I can't contribute by yeah. like leading by example I yeah. can't like, you know what I mean so um, I think I learned to lead by example, like through my rehab, right? In a way, and then also yeah. I think just living the college lifestyle, like, right, right. really helped me because it was like I was making friends and yeah. um, you have other things. You have other things, yeah. You have other things going on, and that's when I really picked up. Um, I had uh, jam sessions. I'm really I love playing guitar and I love singing. Oh yes, I knew the singing. Okay. Yeah, so. Oh. I used to find people in my dorm that like played music and okay. we would always like get together, I don't know, like once a month, once a week or something, yeah. and we would sit in the dorm lounge and just take over and just start <laughs> jamming, playing music. Oh, it was awesome. awesome. So that good. that really helped me to like, you know, separate gymnastics and um, have right. another hobby to look forward to. Absolutely. And yeah. so that was ACL. So, okay. Like you're rehabbing there, but what about your upper body strength? So a lot right. of people are like, oh, I'm injured. I can't. Do anything have a rehab but how do you not lose your other strength in yeah other parts? you know what's interesting is someone told me that um if you do uh, more on your other side it actually like yeah. transfers over to the one side yeah. is that true yeah. <laughs> yeah so that that's like what i was doing too i did a lot of exercises on okay. my whole body but i think in the gym um it was four hours of practice so i kept myself busy for the whole four four yeah. hours which is interesting because miss val is always like whenever i looked at Kenny, she wasn't like she was always doing something that's like good. whether it was like I don't know, like ankle raises or yeah. something little. I was always moving around. Right, right. And so right. I think that's actually what helped me during practice too is to be like, oh, I can work on my little wrist muscles. Yeah. Or like yeah. as much as I hate upper body, <laughs> upper body muscles and yeah. all that stuff. And yeah. I mean, the great thing about ACL rehab, it's like a lot of butt exercises. <laughs> so it's like, You're like, hey. You're like, hey. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Popping awesome. in as a freshman. There's always a way. There's always a way. Right. So what... What, I mean, like, with that, of course, you've got, well, I've got this this problem or I've got this challenge, but how did you stay grateful? Like, what are three yeah. moments of gratitude that you have throughout your, I guess, entire career? Yeah, um, it was interesting. While I was going through my ACL, Miss Val was also going through her breast cancer. Oh, that's right. And I think that was my sophomore year, I want to say. Okay. And so we were kind of going through really rough times simultaneously mm. and I remember her coming in the gym and just saying I'm so grateful for each day like I don't mm-hmm. even know if I get each day and mine was like not as life-threatening as right, hers right. and I think being almost it was kind of almost like a blessing in disguise for her to go through the breast cancer I think everyone as a team and even her it was um just a moment to always take a step back of what yeah. we're doing and um be appreciative that we can walk and uh I was really appreciative that every day I could come to UCLA yeah. and also that I was there because it was it was um definitely like it not a lot of people get to do that and not yeah. a lot of people get to you know go to California go to school here and mm-hmm. um, for me during my ACL I, I definitely had a lot of moments of gratitude because I was like at least I I was celebrating the smallest moments like yeah. I was so excited when I could jump again or I was so excited when yeah. I did a lunge without it hurting and I would like announce that to the team I'm like it yeah. didn't hurt <laughs> and then but it was great because yeah. it's like those little moments that really um grounded me mm-hmm. and really uh made me look forward to each next step which is why I think I got through my ACL in such a positive way and right. a lot of people would be like oh my god it's the same thing over and over again and I'm yeah. like okay well let's sh-. a lot of it was like let's do it without pain kind of thing right But um, even, like, my teammates, too, they really helped me, like, just celebrate all the small moments that I was going through. Right. I mean, like, last week's episode, Chelsea Memel, um, she was saying how, you know, she had shoulder surgery. And Mm -hmm. she was like, how pitiful is this that I'm, like, celebrating lifting my arm? But it Mm -hmm. is those small victories that keep, like, it's a snowball effect because then you end up better than you were. So for women who's you know, goal is to get back in shape, or they were a former gymnast or a former athlete, um, what is your advice to them for getting back into it and reconnecting with that identity as an athlete? Do you mean, um, like, after they retire or, mm-hmm. like, oh, it could like be right now, like what I'm doing right now? Yeah, like how, do you, how do you still feel like a gymnast even though you're not 
like yeah. not doing it anymore? Like, how can you get back into it? How can you stay active? Yeah, um, all that. You know, I never identified myself as a gymnast. Interesting. Because I'm not just a gymnast. Yeah. Like, I'm my own person. Yeah. And I think that really helped because I, I never look at when I quit gymnastics or when I retired, sorry. Yes. When yes. I retired. I always say retired. I never say quit. Yeah. And everyone's like, that's a nice way to put it. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, you're like. Like you're old or something, but it's like that's what you say. Yeah, but yeah. when I when I retired, I was never I'm never like oh what can I do to be back like a gymnast. I think mm. once I um, stopped gym and you know I had to move on into the adult world. Right. Um, it does come in waves though. I think mm. I love gymnastics and I I loved performing it, but yeah. my body knew I was done. Right. And I kind of mentally accepted that. I think maybe it was a little easier for me because I thought I was graduating my fifth year. <laughs> so I had I had like a whole year to process this. Yeah. So I, I you know I didn't come just all of a sudden. Right. But at the same time, moving on from gymnastics, it is really hard to. Um, be away from the team. I think right. the biggest thing for me was being away from the team and not being able to see all your friends every single day. And I think, yeah. honestly, that's just college in general. And, yeah. you know, because you can't knock on people's doors and, like, right, go up right, to them. Right. And, um, so it's just the whole community changes. But yeah. I've dived into this acting world, and mm -hmm. um, I'm a YouTuber right now. So yeah. I, I've been really um, fortunate and really lucky with that I get to do something that I actually really like. Yeah. And I'm still testing out the waters, and it was definitely waves. Yeah. Like, it was kind of like, you're starting from the bottom. And I was thinking in my head, in gymnastics, you don't remember starting from the bottom because you were yeah. so young. Yeah. So it was like, you just kind of got thrown into it, right. and then you work your way up. And but then, then that's your normal. Yeah, but right. then when you're figuring out the adult world, you're deciding to start something, and yeah. you also have to accept you are starting from the bottom. Like, right. it's... Like, in anything in life, I think if you start something new, you know, you got to be proud of little baby steps. Right. And so I think with my YouTube channel, I'm really proud because I'm, like, you being able to, you know, express my creativity. Yeah. And with acting, it's a little more frustrating. Yeah. But <laughs> it's a little more technical. Yeah. But yeah. it's um, different because I am starting to realize, like, I am creating my own community right. in that world. I'm starting to kind of build my foundation. And yeah. I always think of the year after college is building a foundation and yeah because in gymnastics you built a foundation since you were a baby right so right. it's way easier to just dive into new gyms go to like yeah start you're, you know rehab you pick or it up, you pick easier, it up easier yeah. so i think but i never identified myself as a gymnast or i never think some actually no sometimes i do think like i'm never gonna be as successful i am in gymnastics but uh, that was kind of like my mid-college crisis <laughs> If we're finding a job, my yeah. mom. My mom's always like, you know, she calls me Christine. She's uh -huh. like, Christine, like, it. You know, they're two different fields. It's like apples and oranges. Like, you can't compare them. Like, be proud of like what you did in gym. And yeah. Then now be proud of something else. So, right. it's like, so my parents have been really great. They they're great. super wise and yeah. they're very supportive. So whenever they tell me things like that, mm -hmm. I'm always like, you're right. Like. It's true. I've closed a chapter in gymnastics yeah. that I'm super proud of, and now it's so exciting to start something completely new that I'm going to take ownership of. Yeah. And it's um, that's kind of how I've been thinking, but it definitely comes in waves. It's like, yeah. One day I'm like, I'm so proud. And other days I'm like, Oh my god, like, what, what am, I am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you 100. percent Oh, it's. I mean, like, what? Okay, so. With your YouTube, yeah. Um, what is your like? What's your goal? What are you focusing on? What are your videos about? Like, if someone wanted to, to yeah. watch, you know, like where could they watch you, and what can they expect? Yeah. So my channel, it's more of a lifestyle channel, okay. which is so. I think that's why I'm still figuring it out because okay. it's so funny. Sophina does a whole different like. Oh yeah. yeah she cool. like act acts and then oh yeah. Like yours. Mine's more um, lifestyle, so yeah. it's but it has some acting because I'll do some skits. Yeah. Uh, but it's interesting because. I am just doing a bunch of videos, and then yeah. I have people, like, label my videos. So they've been labeling me more as lifestyle. Oh, Does that make sense? Because yeah. I'm not trying to be, like, oh, I'm going to be a beauty yeah. person. I'm going to be this. I'm yeah. going to be that. Like, Because yeah. I have so many things that I'm interested in yeah, that, sure lifestyle. that I'd like to share. And, same, and I never, like could think of my brand because everyone's mm -hmm. like what's your brand of course when I was a gymnast my, gy my brain is a gymnast right, right. but now I'm not a gymnast anymore yeah. so they're you're kind of asking like what is my brand yeah. I'm like an athlete who is a lifestyle vlogger or right, in a way right. yeah. so that's that's kind of like um just it's more people following my journey yeah. of what I've been doing and what I've been up to uh -huh. I do have some skits of like 
I have like 19 different types of gymnast skin yeah, I that I do with Janae <laughs> and it was so fun and I've been doing I've been trying different things yeah. like I tried soccer like oh. playing professional or playing soccer with yeah. these professionals yeah. and then I uh played um or I tried break dancing oh god so that one was really uh. funny because I thought I could do it but it's you know I'm still building my channel yeah. so it's great because I'm trying to post twice a week my goal for my YouTube channel obviously is to hit a million subscribers one day yes okay. and then um to um what it, what is it to oh post twice a week posting twice a week is kind of like my That's goal hard. it's a lot but it, it like technically is my full time job right so I'm uh, I have a YouTube manager now so what? I'm like no I know I'm like in the YouTube world oh like I'm God. like actually a YouTuber wow I didn't know that was a thing wow. yeah I know right That's I didn't good. either until That's after awesome. season because okay. when I started posting my vlogs yeah. um. Some someone came up to me and they're like, "Oh, we'd love to manage you." I'm like, "I don't understand." Like, <laughs> what are these? I was words? like, "What? Well, I don't get it." <laughs> so, but it's been great though. I'm, I'm learning so much about the online digital world mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, building my social platform, and it's yeah. great because I feel like I can connect to my fans, which I call penguins. They're my penguins. <laughs> I was wondering what that, was. <laughs> that makes sense now. Okay. Yeah, I'm right. I'm Mama Pang, and they're yeah. my penguins. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. And I think like you get more engagement through YouTube, like in general. Too. Oh, it's great. I and I love it when, especially when I travel mm -hmm. to gymnastics competitions, yeah. and when people say they watch my vlogs yeah. and they've been up, to, they they um keep up with it. Yeah. I love putting like all my little penguins on my vlogs because they get so excited. And yeah. Like, oh, like I want to share that moment with right, them because right. like they're following my journey and my yep. journey is their journey. So yeah. that's kind of like what how I see it. I love that. Yeah. I guess the final question is just like, in your opinion, because I ask this to everybody, yeah. like, what does it mean to train like a gymnast? Oh, yeah. Training like a gymnast means training like an all-around athlete. Um, mm -hmm. Especially at UCLA, we talked about training as an athlete, not uh -huh. a gymnast, uh -huh. because you want to be well-rounded in everything you do, and I think it is harder to think, I'm a gymnast 24-7. Like, right. no, you're an athlete 24-7 because yes. you need to eat right, yep. you need to sleep right. Yep. And people have different perspectives of gymnasts. They're mm -hmm. like, gymnasts don't eat. And that's like, right. no, athletes eat. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's and athletes feel their bodies to what they need. Yeah. So that's why I always say, like, it, what it means to train like a gymnast is really training like an athlete, but yeah. you just have little specific things that you're a little better at. Yeah. <laughs> like flexibility. Yes, that's <laughs> Just so a true. little better at and a little um, more dialed in. Right. I would say gymnastics are more focused on the little details yeah. of your muscles. Yeah. But it, and an athlete is too, but you're an athlete in a different, more mm -hmm. fine-tuned way. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's what I totally agree with that because that's, you know, you when you – like identify or when you train like an athlete like your your behaviors and your decisions through nutrition through your like life how you act it's just like you wouldn't eat that if you yeah were an athlete you wouldn't do this because that's like who you are embodying I love right. that yeah well thank Thanks. you is there anything else you would like to say to our listeners or um how they can find you on social media what they sure can you can find me on social media on instagram and twitter at actually all my social media is at peng peng see lee because there is another peng peng lee what <laughs> yes i was like what oh, no. there's another peng peng lee so i am not her guys <laughs> I am Pink Pink Lee. Lee, okay. so it's like my first name is in the little, in the middle, it's yeah. in there somewhere. Okay. And then um, we actually, Janae and I have a podcast coming out too. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. I saw you like recording something. Yeah. But, okay. it's, it's in the makings right now, but like, it's hopefully, it is um, similar to yours, which is great. Yeah. It's um It's called Ambition on Fleek, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's all about like health and wellness stuff okay. that like sharing like stories and yeah. um, just how to like have a positive mindset, how to like, you know deal with coaches like it's mm -hmm. very um mental so we wanted yes. to we wanted to be broad enough so we could share our stories with other athletes right so that other athletes can um relate to our stories yeah. and i think they will too and we haven't had a guest on it yet yeah but we're hoping to have like you know baseball yeah. players and yeah. like uh, football players and other yeah. people in sports so that um they could share their stories of how they got through yeah. acl injuries and whatever and um, see if we're related in, yeah. in some kind of weird athletic world. Definitely. So, yeah, we're working on it, and we're, like, super excited to launch it soon. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep an ear out, and I'll think of people that I know, too. Yeah. Um, that could definitely join you. Well, thank you for yeah, coming Thanks for having on. me. Um, and that is today's episode.